How's it going everybody? It's James from FTR Outdoors. Uh, we got a pretty wicked video for you guys today. Kind of a follow up of my uh, Toyota Tacoma rig walk around. Here we got Kieran, good buddy of ours. He's out on a pretty sweet trip with us this week. And he's got, uh, as you can see, a pretty wicked forerunner. You guys are going to be seeing a lot of this truck. Um, he's got a decent amount of work done to his forerunner as well. It's all pretty tasteful, pretty practical. Uh, so today we're gonna we're gonna do a walk around to the Forerunner um, because I know a lot of you guys aren't just Tacoma guys, you're Toyota guys in general who like Forerunners as well. They're pretty sweet trucks. Uh, so, Kieran, uh, what do you got here, man? What kind of truck you got? Well, it's a 2019 TRD off-road. Uh, I opted to go with the off-road just because it's a cheaper option than the Pro, and I knew I was gonna do a lot of work to it. So. That's why I opted to get the TRD off-road. I didn't know it came with KDSS, but uh, it's got the system, so. It's doing pretty good for you, too. Yeah, it's doing all right. So very similar to what I did, I bought the TRD off-road. I think it's a wise choice. So anybody out there thinking about doing work to a truck, uh, consider an off-road if you're you're wanting to modify it. If you don't want to modify it, maybe go the pro route. Yeah, nothing um, against the pro, but this is better than yeah. a pro now. Yeah, um, so what kind of mods did you start with? So first things first, I started with four new tires from uh, Fountain Tire because the tires it came with were Falcon AT3s and they ended up splitting right down the tread. So I needed new tires right away. And then I opted to go with the Prinsu roof rack. Okay. And I wanted to get the full just because I'll end up running max tracks up here eventually. The sunroof works with this roof rack so I can open it, close it. Yeah. whatever I want to do with it. So. It, I think that's a, a big thing that a lot of people wonder is does yeah. it work with the I was sunroof. pretty scared to yeah. use my sunroof at first, but uh, it just, it goes into the truck. Yeah. It doesn't go out and over. No issue. So there is no issue, yeah. And they'll say it works with the sunroof. So you can trust what they say on the internet. So you had a, the, the off-road, if you guys are, know already, it comes with a, a factory rack on it. So yeah. what would you have to actually do to, to get the Prince on? So I had to remove like the factory uh, roof rails. Yeah. So I just went around, did it at home, built the rack on the floor and just went around, pried up the plastic pieces, unbolted it and it all, this rack comes with all the hardware. So I just used all Prince's hardware. So it's a no drill job, just like yeah. most Prince racks. Um, I was there when he did it. It was super quick and easy. Uh, so no real concern with it. The only thing you really got to focus on is if you're sealing uh, the bolts uh, where you, you put the, the Princey ones into the factory holes, make sure you really get a good water seal on that. Cause yeah. Use the marine too. grade silicone yeah. is what you had. And yeah. It's it's holding up. Like I haven't had a single leak. It's been through a winter, yeah. cold snaps, so it's contracting, expanding, and I haven't had a single leak. My uh, roof lining is good, yeah. so no problems there. And uh, so after the Prince Sue, uh, what did that cost you, by the way? Uh, it was 1500 Canadian. 1500 Canadian yeah. bucks. This is, again, all in Canadian dollars, guys. Um, we're from Canada. As you can see, it's snowing right now. Uh, and you'll see in uh, this week's video, there's going to be a lot of uh, intermittent weather snaps here. It was sunny and like 10 degrees five minutes ago, I swear to God. Yeah. And now it's miserable out. And so. about an hour ago, it was like a full-on whiteout. So. Yeah. Welcome to uh, the Forestry Trunk Road, yeah. people. A little uh, jacket break. <laughs> it's a little chilly. <laughs> yep. What came next? So I bought the Prince rack for the tree line uh, Tamarack two three person rooftop tent. Uh, this is a company down in Turner Valley. The customer service, awesome. The guys are great there. Um, any questions, they answered it for me, so. so. If you guys are curious, Turner Valley, um, we got a lot of American viewers. Uh, it's a local Canadian company here in Alberta. South uh, Calgary. Yeah, South Calgary in the Rocky Mountains, right in the heart of it. Um, so they're designed to withstand our Rocky Mountain weather conditions. Yeah. Um, in my Tacoma video, I mentioned, you know, I'm not a big rooftop tent guy, um, but even on, on trips like this, I'm a little jealous given the fact that it's snowing and gross out and this thing is super easy to just crawl up into and be out of the elements and then fold up and be gone. So yeah, all right, go on with that thing. Yeah, so it's uh, four season. It's got a real heavy ripstop canvas, so if there is rips. It'll just be localized to one part and I can just patch it up quick. Um, the fly is fire retardant, so I can be close to a fire, sparks fly, 
okay, I don't really have to worry about it. And then I like this tent as well because there's a nice big cargo net under here. So when we go out fishing, I can hang my waders from here, just a couple carabiners, and I can throw any like socks or whatever I want to dry out up here. And just general storage, and I can put my fishing rods in these tool holders and yeah. just run them across. So that way I don't have to keep tearing down my rod. So that's extra handy, and if somebody else is coming with me, they can run their rod through here as well. So run their rod through there? Run their rod right through there. <laughs> Does this guy come with a mattress already? Yeah, it comes with a, I think it's a two and a half inch high density foam mattress. But um, I run an extra inch of memory foam, probably gonna run another two inch double size uh, memory foam topper, just cause I'm a side sleeper and yeah. I don't like waking up with sore shoulders. But uh, yeah, it's been really good. I've had some great sleeps in this tent. Uh, if you guys want to look up in there, I have it open. It's got the skylights open right now, but the fly has a little plastic covering, so Ooh. no snow is getting into my tent. Yeah, it's super roomy up there. Yeah, and I'm just airing it out right now because obviously tearing it down in a snowstorm is kind of yeah. less than ideal, but whatever. We just need a female laying there and then we'd go viral on Instagram. <laughs> right, there you go. <laughs> And uh, so what did this guy cost? Uh, sorry. What did this guy cost you, Karen? I know these things tend to be a little expensive. Yeah, so this one was 3,400 bucks Canadian. So $3,400. Um, could you have actually mounted it on your factory? I could have, I so, could have. Yeah, so for people out there who are like, oh, do I have to buy the Prince suit or can I just put it on my yep. stock rack? You can just put it in the stock rack. So it saves so, you a little bit of cash. The way I justified it to myself though is, uh, the guys down at Treeline, they recommended three crossbars on your roof rails. And here, like, you have to buy them in like pairs. And they're expensive. And they are expensive. So me to buy two sets. So one set's $400, the other set's $400. It's gonna run me $800 Canadian. This is $1,500. I was like, well, why don't I just get a full length roof rack, have more utility, and not have to worry about it down the road. So Way, way better rack too. I can tell you, like from experience, we both know they're tough. Yeah. Like, yeah, when you put them together, you think they're maybe a little flimsy, but they go through. Once they're together, hard. like they're solid. Like, so this road will tear most things apart, and this rack's been down it plenty of times and hasn't um, hasn't broken or anything. So, so that's the tent, pretty much. Um, what is kind of the next thing you did? The next thing I did, I talked to the guys down at Crave Automotive got things rolling because I knew I wanted to get newer suspension, better suspension, just from driving down the trunk road and having my teeth chatter against each other all the time. So you guys are curious, Crave Automotive, big uh, Toyota shop specialty guys uh, in Calgary. Yeah. Um, they do all the work on our trucks and most Toyotas in the province I would imagine. So mm -hmm. yeah, if you want to kind of give us a rundown of that and uh, a price breakdown and we'll kind of go from there. The first thing I wanted was after all this was suspension, right? And I was like looking at different suspension setups and I was like, ah, oh, you know, the old man EMU BP51s with the internal bypass, that seems pretty cool. But then I was reading like, there's a lot of problems with it in the cold, that kind of thing. And just corrosion, right? Cause Canada, Alberta is not uh, that nice on equipment. So I looked at Crave and uh, they're like, we have Alka. So got the Alka. 2.5 inch shock body. Uh, it's a two to three inch lift. I have it three in the front, and I think it's two inches in the back right now. Um, and it's adjustable, so we adjusted it for a bit of a softer ride down the trunk road, and it's been great over washboard. Like we've hit some pretty uh, big whoops and stuff, so it's well, no like problem. Kieran mentioned the. Uh Kieran mentioned the BP51s at first, and it's funny. So I have the the Alcas as well, same shocks. Um, and before that, I uh, before I went with Alca or even knew about it, I kind of chatted with Kieran that I, I wanted to go cheaper and do like the old man Emu kind of nitro shock kit. Yeah. And Kieran was the one who told me about the Alca, and I was like, oh, it's way too expensive, too extreme. And then I did more research into it, and uh, long term, I think usability. It was just a way better choice. Yeah. So we decided to, well, I decided to go with that thanks to this guy. I actually sniped him before he got him. <laughs> yeah. This is actually your first big trip on these guys. It is. And yeah. I've been running mine for probably a dozen or more trips now. And yeah. uh, they're awesome, eh? Yeah, they're you were the sweet. guinea pig and I was like, yeah, yeah, they're, uh, yeah. they're worth it. 
And uh, yeah, everything in these are the same as mine. Um, what are the differences though in like a lift kit with the Elkas, obviously, um, in the Forerunner versus my Tacoma? Because I got leaf springs. Um, like what did you have to do like in the back in terms of springs and in the front in terms of control arm spacers that kind of stuff yeah so in the front i have spc upper control arms uh, they've been really good so far no issues they're pretty heavy duty and because i run the kdss crave recommended that i get the spacer kit for the kdss otherwise i'm going to have a pretty hard lean so i have that kit in there i believe it was Two hundred and fifty dollars Canadian. Okay, you're just an extra. Hey, not like. Yeah. Some guys won't do it, but yeah. recommended. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Right. And so far, no issues. It drives straighter than it did when it was stock, so I have no issues with that whatsoever. And then, uh, yeah, I got the Stealth Custom Series Ray Tens. They're. Uh, <laughs> what is happening? <laughs> Seventeen <laughs> by eight and a half. With a negative 10 offset, and I'm just running stock tire size, but uh, they're dirt track, so they look a little beefier. So like me, with uh, <laughs> this weather's nuts right now. <laughs> welcome, welcome to Canada, eh? Uh, so <laughs> Trample on. <laughs> so like me, he's stuck with the, the stock tire size. Um, we do a lot of miles, and for now, we're just trying to get a feel for them, and we're pretty happy with the stock. And yeah. it looks sweet, in my opinion. Yeah, and there's enough sidewall, right? Like, I can air down still. So. What are the, the, the rims run you? Uh, they were 365 a piece. So I'm pretty sure. 14, 1500 bucks for this a set. This is like Canadian. snow. <laughs> hey man, like what is this? I wonder if we should cut this for <laughs> All right, so we're gonna be back Small break. because yeah. this is gnarly. And like, we look at the get size. Look at the size of that. Yeah, we're just gonna wait for this to pass. I think. That's insane. It's like soft hail. Right, it's that's soft uh, hail. Uh, back again. <laughs> back again, guys. Same spot. Uh, of the Forerunner, uh, since we stopped filming, uh, our previous filming was actually yesterday, as you guys will see or have seen. There was a lot of snow. Weather took a turn for the worse. Turned out to be a real rough night. Uh, and as you can see, the truck looks a little bit different now because we've done a little bit of driving, hit some trails today. Um, so yeah, we'll start off a uh, new day. Mm -hmm. We'll go back to where we were um, with the suspension. Yeah. Uh, so starting off with like the, what, what, what did it cost you to build uh, or what did it cost you to get the suspension installed and what did you get installed? Uh, so for suspension is about $8,000 for uh, the whole kit. So that includes upper control arms, which are SPC. Um, also too, I have some spacers for my KDSS system. Can't remember the exact name, but it just takes the lean out once it's lifted. Brought you Forerunner guys out there that have KDSS. Um, if you're getting a lift, talk to your shops about that because it's probably worth doing. Yeah, make sure you tell them you have either KDSS or x -Rez. That's what it's called. All That's right. with the limited editions anyways. But let them know. Elkas are two and a half inch diameter shock bodies. External resi is adjustable. Uh, I got the two to three inch lift. So it's three inches in the front and about two inches in the rear. Kind of get it level but uh, I do have a bit of a rake in the rear just for when I load it up with stuff. Okay, we adjusted it before this trip. How do you like it? It's your first like real big time testing. Honestly from like last year yeah. <laughs> like my teeth were just clanking against each other and like gonna fall out of my head but uh, this year is a lot nicer. Um, a lot nicer. As we kind of touched on the, uh, the Tacoma build uh, a big draw for us up here in Canada is the weather changes. Today is a perfect example for that. Um, it's probably eight, nine degrees in the sun outside today, Celsius. Uh, last night it went down as low as I'm going to imagine, minus 20 degrees Celsius. It was like frigid cold. Um, so that's why the Alcas for us make sense. You've got the, the stainless steel and the aluminum build on those things, so they're, they're typically gonna last a little bit longer from what we've heard and what we can tell so far. Mm -hmm. um, so you've got, you, we covered the upper control arms with shocks. Yep. Uh, did you have to add, did you drop your differential? Yeah, I, I take it? Yeah, yeah, I got the green lane differential drop, so okay, and that's then in there. Question I have for you is, uh, do you have the same clamshell bushing that the Tacoma does? East Coast Gear Supply clamshell bushing. So I didn't get that one done of mine. I talked about how I kind of regret not doing it and I'm gonna have to go back to the shop and do it anyways for longevity. It's a $400. Uh... Yeah, 
So 400 bucks bushing. is a bushing and a CV axle. He got it done. That's exactly what I mentioned on mine that I didn't get done that I had wanted to get done. Yeah. Um, and then what other work did you get done? He, he got this whole build done recently within the last month. Yep. Um, so these are new. They don't look quite like they did yesterday, but what kind of wheels you got there? So they're black, Stealth Custom <laughs> Series Ray 10s. Uh, I really enjoy them. I like the look, I like the bullet hole style. Um, haven't had an issue uh, with my old rims. I had a constant issue of like the tires going out of balance. Yeah. And I just had to keep bringing them back, getting them rebalanced, and it was just really annoying. Honestly, like really annoying. If you get a, like a little bit of mud in those like the old like TRD off road rims, like mm -hmm. they just go way out of whack and it's, it's no fun driving it down the road on the highway. Like it's okay on these roads because yeah. you're not going 100, but these ones are nice. They're hub centric and. Uh, I haven't had a single issue with the balance yet, so. What, uh, what like size and offset? Um, you know? They're 17 by eight and a half uh, with a negative 10 offset. So quite a bit more of an offset negatively than the stock Forerunner. Do you know what the stock offset is? No. I can so I, I think if it's anything like the Tacoma, yeah, like mine's like 25, plus 25 in a stock yeah. wheel. So you're going from plus 25 to a negative 10 offset, which is quite a bit more aggressive. Um, even then, like you look at it, even with that negative 10 offset, you're yeah. still almost buried under the fender flare here. So yeah, it's which not is like nice. too wide and too silly looking. Because I don't want to be taking out my mirrors or my windows or anything. Or other like people that. on the road. You yeah. Know? yeah. <laughs> it's nice to be courteous. <laughs> For sure. Um, and then tires. So I, you've got the same tires as me. Yep. Mine are on now. Yep. I see you got the Dura Tracks. 265, uh, 70 or 17s. So Kieran's running stock as well. Um, We've chatted extensively about the tire size, mm -hmm. and you're just kind of feeling it out, seeing how you like it for now. Hey, I for. stock tire size is fine for me. Yeah, so like we've, like we said, we hit a lot of like the trucks are dirty, nothing crazy today, um, but a few sections where ground clearance could potentially be an issue. Yeah. Um, and with the this is a 32 on here essentially, mm -hmm. um, no problem at all, and some pretty aggressive, gnarly looking sections of trail so there's not really a huge concern with the no. stock and like for size. like what we do it's like touring right overlanding we're not yeah just specific to rock crawling so i don't need a 35 inch tire or anything like that so. yeah and like put in perspective like these things aren't really that fuel efficient these four runners run the four liter v6 of the five speed transmission in it yeah i'm averaging 15.2 consistently yeah so in the city and on the highway so, so. 15.2 is liters per 100k guys to put in perspective, we have driven, um, we went probably 250, maybe 300 kilometers, maybe even closer to 400 without a gas station. Mm -hmm. um, so with the tanks and these things, you're pushing it, like that's a, a fair distance. Um, and if any farther, you might need need gas. Yeah. So as they stand right now, like we have no issue going another couple hundred Oh, we could go the distance, right? it's fine. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, so we don't have to worry about carrying jerry cans of gas, so the fuel economy is still half decent. Mm -hmm. um, what do the wheels cost you? Sorry, we didn't uh, 365 that. a piece. Canadian dollars, does that Canadian include dollars. the mountain balance or is that just the wheel itself? That's uh, just the wheel itself. So yeah, 1400 bucks roughly Canadian or just, just about 15, um, but they're a solid wheel, they look super sweet. You guys will see footage uh, in this video, obviously, of what they look like when they're semi-clean. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, that kind of covers these uh, guys over here. Uh, we'll go to the front end now, Cameron. And also, too, one thing, oh, yeah. I have the timber and bump stops up the front as well. Do you have those in the, the back? Yeah, and yeah. the back and the, and so, the front. A little different bump stop than in the Tacoma. Obviously, they're not the same vehicle, but Timber and Industries bump stops. How much are those running? A couple hundred bucks, maybe? Yeah, 300 bucks. Yeah. Uh, those are included in the total price of the lift, I would imagine. Like when you mm -hmm. see the 8,000 bucks, it's all kind of a general yeah. price. Yeah, for um, sure. Same deal, guys, like with the, like the Tacoma video, when we say the, the price breakdown of the lift, uh, when you lift the truck, there's other things you have to do. Karen mentioned the clamshell bushing, the upper control arms, the spacers for his KDSS system, his pump stops, front and rear. Yeah. Um, so there's a lot more than just the shock. And I knew like when I wanted to do this lift, like I wanted to do it right. Yeah, yeah. It's like you don't want to go half ass. Yeah, and it. then have to do work down the road and have issues, yeah. right? You just like, gotta go all in, buy once, cry once. Mm -hmm. You won't regret it. Because at the end of the day, you're changing the factory. Yeah. Like build of the vehicle. Factories. Mm -hmm 
typically always best as soon as you veer away from factory it's not engineered the vehicle isn't engineered to to be that way right and also too like i know a lot of people want to see like the angle on the cv and i was pretty uh, impressed actually once the cv or the drop was done the cv axle's pretty close to stock um, but what do you got up here karen this is kind of uh this is vastly different than let's say shane's forerunner so i have a green lane stump bumper up the front i have a 10,000 pound Smitty built X20 winch in there with a synthetic line. Okay. And it's a wireless controller. I also have the Factor 55 uh, flat link in OD green, can't really tell. But uh, and I also have the Factor 55 fair lead as well. Um, green lane stump bumper, what did this run you? The green lane stump bumper ran me 1400 So this is again Canadian dollars. And that was Boxing Day. <laughs> Boxing Day, so was it sale. Yeah. 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 Uh, that comes with the, the hoop and then the powder coat, obviously. Yeah. Yeah. So, like, it, when you go on to, the, like, the Green Lane Off-Road website, like, you can order it in just raw aluminum. This is aluminum, by the way. I opted to go for aluminum just because it's lighter. And, uh... It's pretty strong. Man, yeah, like... You're looking at, like, I would imagine TIG welded aluminum <laughs> round tubing. Mm -hmm. And then you've got some... Bent. Either this was made out of a tube and cut and welded. I would imagine this was like broke on a machine. Yeah. Um, Green Lane Off Road, guys. This is a uh, Canadian company. Yeah, the same uh, company that made the skid plate on my Tacoma. Um, so these are awesome. We like to support Canadian companies always. Yep. Um, what did the uh, the Smitty build? You said Smitty built X20, right? Yeah. And that's a 10,000 pound winch. What did that guy run here? I think that was 850 dollars. Canadian dollars. Canadian. Yeah. And you didn't have to like beef up your battery or anything like that? No, nope, no, nothing. I'm still running the stock battery in there. Okay, and then the uh, the fair lead and the, well, I, I don't have, a there's a shackle, what is this? Yeah, so it's just like a soft shackle system. So you run your uh, D-ring through there and then you can get a tree saver on there. Um, you can run the, uh, they're like factor 55 uh, soft shackles as well you can put through there instead of like a, a right because you just shackle. don't want like metal flying around yeah yeah um just makes it a little bit safer when you're winching now i know like stock like the smitty belts obviously come with some stuff like a hook and yeah. their own fair lead yeah they've got their own fair lead like my what smitty built uh fairly sitting at home but what did the factor 55 stuff run here? i think total it was like 300 bucks, 300 bucks. everything together yeah. and then uh, sir, what kind of light bar you got running in there? I got a Baja Designs uh, S8 20 inch light bar with the amber lens on it. Um, so I'll make a comment on that light bar. I'm not a huge, huge fan of uh, light bars, especially white LED light bars. Um, there's other means of getting your white light out there, uh, especially roof mounted light bars. I think they're kind of they're kind of silly. But Kieran here with the uh, amber light bar down low actually below the level of the hood um, on roads like this where it gets really dusty snow. You have adverse snow conditions and yeah. stuff like that. We live in Canada. It's not uncommon everything. Yeah, it's not uncommon here. to to have like those crazy snowstorms where if you were to flick on your high beams Even it's just yeah. gonna shine back in your face if you've got a white LED light bar up on your roof It's gonna bounce it's gonna off your you. hood and yeah. you won't be able to see much um, and then down here as well It's just gonna reflect back the amber down here actually clears the path of the road and it makes it visibly better. Um, Contrast thing, is way better. Pumps out a ton of light too, so yep. what did that guy cost you? That was uh, 700 and some. And again, you didn't have to do any change in the battery, nope. anything like that. What kind of switch are you running for this light bar? I would imagine there's a switch, right? Yeah, it's just a toggle. But uh, this is the backlight switch, just a little toggle. And then this is the actual light bar switch. Lights up red when it's on. And off when it's off. Hey guys, so like, I know you guys might not be able to see it, um, but it is, like it's bright out right here, the sun's right there. Uh, it's bright, like you, yeah, I don't know if you'll be able to see the color on my hand, um, but it's uh, it's bright enough that midday sun shining directly on it, you've got a significant amount of light, so sweet job there, Kieran. How long are you on the truck now? Oh, a couple of years. Couple years I'm on now. YouTube now. Yeah. So Kieran bought his truck probably close to a year after mine, yeah. um, and he did a similar thing that I did. He actually he drove it, got a feel for it, and then through trial and error, um, really learned what he liked and kind of valued in like an off-road build or a touring build. Yeah. Um, and so far, it's killing it. That's um, awesome, man. 
my truck and your truck I would say are equally as capable uh, they have their strengths here and there but um, with all the trips that we do uh, this is gonna get you pretty much anywhere uh, right where we're camped right now you can see it's super muddy um, if you had let's say a RAV4 at this point you honestly wouldn't be able to make it up here I would highly 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 doubt it uh, doubt it um, so in this circumstance a truck like this is uh, very usable and very practical um, you oh, got the you go for function right yeah and like we do a lot of highway mm -hmm. so you yeah. have to account for that like we go majority highway driving and then like a little bit of dirt here and there and then it's all the way back on the highway yeah um, kind of to, to add on that like on our last video uh, with the taco video sorry not the last video um, I talked about the campsite that we were currently in um, we'll kind of end the video here because the build is pretty well done so far uh, we'll do an update as it progresses if it does um, but the last campsite we were in I mentioned you know use what you got and go where you can go with it just have fun with it um, we're lucky enough to be able to build trucks like this um, we like to take our time invest the money here and there when we have it uh, to build these up that's why it's taken you know two three years to get to the point where they're at now there's obviously forerunners out there that are a lot more jacked up than this one but for what we do it's perfect um, you guys let's say you don't have a build at home and only have a stock forerunner uh, let's say a TRD off-road and totally stock form where we're at right now and I would argue everywhere that we went this week even on the off-road trails you could do it stock these trucks did not even struggle once um, where we live it's kind of hard to find trails that are actually going to push you to the limit where you are going to need to winch uh, where you're going to need that 35 inch tire where you're going to need that uh, you know locking front and rear differential uh, so We'll end it at that. Uh, same sure, thing as like, last time. I'm right? sure the trails are out there, but for what we for do, what we do, and we haven't found any yet. Like we yeah. explore a lot of side roads, and like this here is just a side road off of a, of a logging road, and uh, you know it's muddy, it's soupy. There's some big ruts down there. Enjoy what you got. Uh, have fun with it. Buy what you can afford. Who cares what everyone else thinks? This is your rig. Build it how you want to build it. Um, if you guys take motivation or like uh, inspiration from this truck build, throw us a comment. If you have any questions, ask us. Uh, we'll be happy to answer. We'll get in contact with Kieran. Yeah. And uh, we'll see if we can throw you guys some answers. And like uh, total up, total build. Like everything I did cost me about fourteen thousand dollars Canadian labor and, and parts. And that's not including the rack in the tent, right? Not including the rack in the tent. So you're, you're looking at probably close to 20,000 bucks, roughly, roughly total. Yeah. So there's your honest number, guys. Mm -hmm. No bullshit number. Uh, it's Canadian dollars again, but $20,000. So you can buy a can pretty buy decent vehicle, vehicle for 20,000 bucks, right? So just yeah. again, use what you got. Uh, but yeah, thanks for tuning in for this one, guys. Uh, sorry that uh, it was kind of jumpy and in multiple parts. We'll kind of piece it together as good as we can. Um, but we can only do so much with the weather and the conditions that we have. I got the, I got the out part. Oh yeah, so uh, hit the bell, like, subscribe. Thanks for watching again. Uh, share with your friends. Until next time. Get outdoors. Ah, hey. <laughs> sweet. Uh, <laughs>